Hello, in this tutorial we will show you how to do shape optimization using ANSA LSOPT and LSDINA for CFD analysis. We split this tutorial into four parts. First in ANSA we will show you how to set up a morphing box and define the task manager and in LSOPT we will create the optimization loop and expect the results. The problem is a CFD simulation of external aerodynamics of a ground vehicle and a high Reynolds number and the optimization objective function will be the maximum downforce divided by the square of the drag force. There are two optimization parameters that change the geometry of the tail of the vehicle, which are TP for top point and BP for bottom point. And the question is what combination of TP and BP will maximize the objective function? In this case, downforce divided by the square of the drag force. The first thing that we have to do is to convert the LSDINA CFD input deck into a structure input deck and this is because ANS unfortunately does not understand the keywords for LSDINA CFD so we convert the mesh into something that ANSA can manipulate. Now we can open ANSA and open the model that we just modified the mesh, the LSDINA mesh, and this model has a geometry that came with the ANSA tutorial. So it's freely available to anybody that has ANSA. So let's get rid of some of the surfaces and we're going to focus on the tail of the vehicle. So we want to create a morphing box, so we go to the morphing menu and we click on box. We select all the nodes that we want inside the box. That's the box that ANSA automatically creates. And we can inspect which nodes are inside that box. And we see that some of the nodes are not, the white nodes are outside of the box. So we we'll reload all the nodes inside the box. Now we check again and we see that all the nodes we wanted are inside. Next step is to split the box. We want to have a better handling of the mesh. So we need to uh, subdivide the box to leave the vertices of those boxes in the areas that we want to morph. So that looks a lot better now. And we're going to change the position of some of the nodes to locate them closer to the areas of the mesh that we're interested in deforming. So the lower panel part of the bumper and uh, the upper part of the trunk. And that's, that's what we want. And we can test now, do a morphing, and we see that things are not quite working as we expected. And that is because we changed the position of the boxes as some of the nodes are loaded in the wrong box, so we need to reload all the boxes again. Let's make a test now, and we move the, the points, on, and that's exactly what we want. Let's uh, test the lower point as well. We have to activate the morphing. Let's do it again. And that is the effect that we want, except that on the ground we see that the nodes are also being deformed and we want that to be static. We don't want the ground to be morphing. So we're going to change the position of the lower part of the morphing box to exclude the ground. So we need to reload all the nodes again and we double check see that the ground is now outside of the box. Good. 
let's double check that everything is as we expect we move the point and the ground is not moving that's good and we're ready now to define the optimization parameters so these are the parameters that will take part in the optimization loop this is the top node and we're going to transform that in the direction of the z-axis we do the same for the lower node we specify the direction and we're done we can quickly check that we're getting the effect that we expect let's see if we deform the mesh we change change the value of the parameter and then we see how the mesh deforms accordingly and this is also useful to study the upper and lower bounds of the parameters that we're going to be using for the optimization we are now ready to define a new task manager it's going to be an optimization task within the optimization task we will add a new design variable we need to specify the name of the design variable file which ANSA and LSAP we use to communicate it's an ASCII file and we're going to add a new morphing parameter to this design variable the same with the other we have two parameters so two design variables we can edit the names of the design variables and the bounds here which we're going to change to be minus 0 0.2 to 0 0.2 and we have to assign the morphing parameter do the same with the other design variable for the bottom point We're going to be using the same bounds minus 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 and we assign the morphing parameter next we have to choose the output format which will be ls in this case and a name for the output that ANSA will create after the, the morphing so ANSA will ask for the details that we want in that file and we just want nodes and elements and we're going to strip the file from any other data because we don't need it, we just need the mesh it's important at this, at this step to modify the path for this file we just want the name of the file we don't want the entire path so <coughs> remove all the path yeah, and we just leave the file alright, so we're ready with the output we can now go ahead and test and do a simulation just a simple linear simulation and see that the morphine is what we expect it's just the last check before we go to the simulation and it looks like this is what we want to see so we modify the optimization task to execution it asks here if we want to replace I already have in this directory another design variable file which is replace it and save the answer file I already had a file here so I'm going to give it a different name 
for the tutorial. So we're ready now to open LSOPT and we're going to create a new optimization model and this is what by default LSOPT will show we want a sequential with domain reduction model and we're going to start uh, defining the stages, the answer stage which is copy here the command line that opens ANSA we need to change and add the design variable file that we just defined in, in ANSA so we're done with that and next we're going to add a new stage and because ANSA will write the, the morph mesh in LS Dyna format but it's the format for the uh, structural model so it will use element shells and nodes and we need um, mesh surface element and mesh surface node so I have a Python script here that, will, uh, that I will provide later uh, just to modify those two keywords it's pretty easy to do that so that's the other stage and a final stage here for LS Dyna. So we want the output from change mesh to go to LS Dyna. And again here the command line we're going to have an MPP run so we need to specify the path to the MPI run etc. The input file we want to have two jobs to be run at once and the next step is to define the parameters in this case we're going to use a GenX to open a file in this case is icfddrag.dat and we want to extract data from this file so I mean, this is a very quick tutorial to GenX but I think it's, it's really handy because it doesn't limit us to the formats that LS Dyna output but it could be used in any ASCII file so it's very simple to use it's actually pretty intuitive so we define the drag here which is the first component of the force don't forget to click into entities drag and the input file name will be ICF drag DAT we do the same now for the downforce and the downforce is the force in the Z direction so we open a template file and we search from the end of the file one row up and three or four columns to the right that's the value that we want so we save this and the extension for the GenX files are G6 so downforce the G6 We save it and exit. Now we look for downforce file <coughs> and we input the, the file that GenX has to read. We have our two parameters. It's actually the average force, not the inter instantaneous. So let's go to average. Okay we're done and all the stages have to run within the directory of a stage LS Dyna for this to work so we modify the answer and change mesh directory and because we want a composition of, of two parameters we have to add a composite stage 
we're going to call it LD from lift to drag radio although it's not lift it's actually downforce and we write the expression um, termination criteria well, we're going to ask for five iterations and the optimization will be on the LD composite and we want to maximize that Finally, I forgot here to add the name of the answer file. Good, I think now we are ready to go. So we just click on normal run. We could go to baseline run to test that everything is working correctly. Or we can just go straight into normal run. And we see that answer stage is, termi is terminating normally change mesh stage is terminating normally and this will take a while to run a few hours possibly so we stop here so after the job is finished we can inspect and we have all normal terminations except for one there's one error termination maybe some extreme point in the geometry didn't have a good mesh. So we can expect the solution. We open a surface where we have um, a composite variable against the bottom point and the top point and we see there's a maximum value there for some value of the parameters somewhere in the middle. We can add all the points from simulation we check the maximum which corresponds to iteration 5.2 uh, and we have the values of the parameters there we can also open it to the to the interpolator and do the same thing but now we have two curves uh, one for the bottom point and one for the top point and we add all the points again <coughs> so we see that there is a maximum somewhere there no, not much different with the bottom point but for the top point we can clearly see the maximum so that's a post-processing so as a summary let's give it quick glimpse at the initial geometry for TP equals 0 and BP equals to 0 this is the initial shape of the vehicle now for the optimal value this is iteration 5.2 that we saw earlier we see how the geometry changes the tail goes up the bottom of the bumper goes up this is a point for the high, highest downforce and it's at the extreme of our parameters and it's actually probably what we expected this is actually a highest down force and uh, minimum drag force since we have all this point we can actually do this analysis and it's also what we expected this is the minimal drag configuration okay so I hope this tutorial was useful thanks for watching and we are looking forward to hearing from you